Hello friends, welcome back. I am Rajneesh and today in this session we are going to understand what PAM is and how it works. PAM stands for Pluggable Authentication Mechanism. So this is actually a generalized way of authenticating any application. It's a generalized API for authentication related services. What happens in case we don't have PAM? We need to statically compile an application for a particular authentication mechanism. For example, if I talking about uh, I am talking about LDAP based authentication or e etc shadow and password based authentication. Let us consider a scenario in which we have a login application on a Linux server which has been statically compiled so that it always authenticates against the user details which are present in etc pass wd and etc shadow so till the time we have the user details inside the plain text files or uh, inside etc shadow and ECT pa uh, etc password all will work fine but what if a new authentication mechanism has come into picture which is like pam or winbind or any other authentication mechanism it will be difficult and we will have to rewrite the code to support that authentication mechanism so how PAM helps us in this scenario is that the applications or the services are created that makes use of these PAM modules and they can be modified easily to support different kind of authentication mechanism let us see how it works PAM has four module interfaces one is auth auth section checks out for the authentication of the user means whether the username and the passwords are correct it simply identifies or matches the username and the passwords of a particular user and make sure that he should be allowed access or not after the user has authenticated himself using these credentials the second section that is checked is account account means okay the user has entered correct credentials but it could be the scenario that the user account has been suspended it has been expired or what if he is not allowed to log in at that particular time for example there could be a policy that allows user to log in only during the office hours and o uh, in off office hours he should not be allowed so that particular scenario is taken care of by the account module interface okay so the third thing that we come on to is the password section password section is password module interface is very easy it simply is used for changing the password so if you are talking about changing the password you have to check out for the complexity of the password so this is the module interface that is responsible for that you can specify it password complexity over here and coming on to the fourth part which is session which says if all is good user has authenticated himself accounting users account is not expired so he can access the service and he can at the time when he is trying to access that service and the session is created for him so what else needs to be done for example think of a scenario when a user first logins into a machine he makes use of SSH or login service his username and passwords are correct so he is authenticated this interface passes the second interface accounting user is allowed to access and account is not expired so this is also passed password forget about it because I am not changing the password and password is not expired so final session is final one is session 
user's home directory is right now not present on the server so session module could be responsible for creating the user's home directory or could be responsible for mounting the user's home directory from the NFS server or it could be local but uh, in local it doesn't actually happen so it could be related to NFS so making and the other part is making users mailbox available so you might have seen in some of the cases you have just typed a command and just press enter and it says that you have received an email that is because of the session module so let's have a picture of how actually it happens here we have a user that is trying to access some service the service could be he is trying to log in through the console he is trying to SSH to a server he is trying to use FTP service on the server he is trying to use su minus to become root or a different user he may be trying to use pseudo service he may be trying to use passwd to change the password so there could be different kind of services that user might be trying to access so these services have been designed or these services provide us a file in the folder slash etc pam dot d so that the authentication mechanism is flexible flexible in terms of by default if we are talking about any server it authenticates against the presence of the user details in slash etc password and password details present in slash etc shadow so in case we have to use different authentication mechanism whether related to LDAP whether using winbind or any other authentication mechanism it could be mysql so we are not required to rewrite the complete code of these applications rather these applications or the way these applications authorize a user could be modified by making use of these spam modules means okay if we are talking about PAM modules, there are a list of modules which are created by different people that support different authentication, accounting, password and session management. By default, it's PAM underscore Unix which allows or checks out for the validity details of a user in the files. It could be PAM MySQL which checks out the details from MySQL database. So there are different kind of modules, PAM underscore LDAP, which has been designed to interact with the LDAP database. So in case we want a particular login service to make use of LDAP database to authenticate against this system, we are not required to rewrite the code of login. Rather, we are going to modify a file which is pam.d slash login so that it adds one more line corresponding to PAM underscore LDAP so that condition also should be satisfied okay so we have different kind of services which support PAM based authentication PAM is pluggable authentication me mechanism which allows a service to make use of a single or a multiple set of PAM modules that should be satisfied to allow access to a particular service so it allows flexibility in the services for authentication mechanism okay so we have a lot of modules present in PAM so if we are trying to access a particular service the first part is user authenticates himself that is user enters his credentials whether they are correct or not if they are correct he'll move to the second stage which is accounting account means make sure whether the user's account is okay or not whether it's suspended expired so it takes care of this part password is used when we are about to change the password it is generally used for checking out the complexity of the password when changing it 
it makes sure whether the password that you have just entered to verify yourself is correct or not session when you are about to provide a session it makes sure that uh, your sc linux contacts are correct or not it makes sure whether your home directory is present or not if not it can create that pam control flags okay so till now we know that all these four sections are required to be passed in case you want to access a particular service if you are talking about any of these interfaces any of these module interfaces it could be a combination of multiple lines which should be satisfied so that the overall authentication module succeeds or fails the same happens for accounting password and session okay required the control flag required says this particular module should succeed in case this module results in failure the overall authentication will fail but it will pass through the other lines in the same section so required module it should pass otherwise your authentication mechanism is failed the final result is failure and you will not be allowed to have access to the service requisite requisite means this particular module should pass in case this module fails you cannot access the service and secondly the modules which are next to this requisite modules will not be processed in case of a required status the modules in the next line will be processed but in requisite this will be the final module and if it fails no further modules will be checked and if it passes the next module will be checked okay but in both the cases in case required module faced or requisite modules fail the output the final output is failure and you a user will not have access to it sufficient okay it makes sure that in case the previous required modules are all succeeded as good all other previous requisite modules have passed this is fine so in case it reaches the sufficient section and this module passes it means this section or section has passed the output will be passed and uh, this authentication success uh, authentication module will result in success and no further modules in authentication phase will be checked and in case this sufficient the module corresponding to sufficient fails it doesn't matter so this part is completely ignored in that case it means in case sufficient module passes or results in success and all the previous requisite and required modules are result in success so the final is success no further authentication modules will be checked or no further modules in this section will be checked optional optional module is by default ignored the only use is when there is no other module inside the same section for example in uh, under optional modules you can have pam underscore mk home there which makes sure that users home directory is present if not it can create it so the final control flag is include in case you want to include a set of lines which are already present in another file so we can include that file to make sure that all those lines are presently included in this particular module okay now coming on to the lab
here we have a machine and now we'll have a generic look into it okay uh, let's understand how this login service works so this is corresponding okay slash etc pam dot d this is the directory which consists of the other services which support PAM and the way that service is authenticated for example here you can see uh, the important things that you can see is login when you are trying to login from the console what is the process passwd when you are trying to change the password and for Samba so means when you are trying to become a root what actually happens sudo when you are trying to run sudo command vsftpd when you are try trying to uh, log in through ftp sshd when you are trying to log in through ssh so these are the different services that support pam so they are they have been configured or they have been designed in such a way so that they provide different kind of mechanism authentication mechanisms that can make use of PAM so let's try to understand how SSHD login works in the service the first thing is the auth section that we already discussed the second is accounting third is password and fourth is session okay let me first move to login okay so here first is first is always auth section because anytime you are in trying to interact with any service the first thing you need to make sure is whether you, your credentials are correct okay right now if you are you log out of it you log in into it you are providing the credentials if you provide the wrong credentials you will not be allowed access to it how does this authentication works this is because of the presence of pam underscore unix module sorry so this is okay can you see pam underscore unix over here no so where is it so we discussed about include flag which says include system auth which means cd slash etc pam dot d and include system auth so system auth is this file which checks out the following lines for auth mechanism the following for accounting then for password and finally for session okay coming on to auth section the first part required pam underscore env is responsible for setting up the environment variables second if sufficient allow him access try first pass okay pam underscore unix checks out the user credentials and make sure that he has entered the right credential and he is allowed to have access to it in case his pam details are correct uh, in case his uh, password details are correct auth section will pass and will not check further for anything requisite so in case it fails the sufficient part fails it is going to check out for the presence of pam underscore succeed underscore if it makes sure, uh, sure whether the user id is greater than or equal to 500 sufficient okay 
so the next part it checks out is for the presence of SSS simple security services SSS module has recently been introduced in RHEL the objective is it provides you to interact with the multiple modules or the other part that it helps you is it can cache your credentials it can allow uh, logins even in case the remote service is uh, not accessible it allows you to make use of uh, LDAP based authentication Active Directory based authentication or WinBind based authentication so auth sufficient WinBind so in case any of these authentication SSS uh, succeeds so finally auth part will result in success if not it will check out for winbind if that succeeds it's fine otherwise it will move to pam deny and finally in case none of them succeeds pam underscore deny will be called and you will not be allowed access to it accounting make sure that the user account is not locked or you have proper access to it pam underscore local user with the URL loc local user and finally you have included WinBind and SSSD support. Password section. So here you can see that you are using PAM Cracklib, which says you can retry thrice. Cracklib makes sure that your password is not very simple. And PAM Unix how your password will be saved so in case you are not clear about any of these modules you can just have a look into a man section corresponding to it for example pam cracklib it says the module to check password against dictionary words at the end you can see an example which says corresponding to the password required cracklib and here you can understand uh, those variables that it specifies so u credit is the maximum credit for having uppercase letters l credit maximum credit for having lowercase letters d credit for having digits so for better understanding it will be good if you could have a look into this man page okay few more things if you are coming to VS FTPD session says PAM key in it and one important thing auth required it means we need to make sure that this always succeeds to allow access to it PAM underscore list file this module says or checks the presence of the user or group in a particular file so next says user means the user sense deny it says in case the user is present in this file slash etc vs ftpd ftp users then do not allow him access to ftp service and here if you have a look into this file you'll see that these are system users so these are your system users so they should not be allowed access to VS FTPD auth required and secondly PAM shells module says the user will be allowed access to the FTP service only in case the shell that has been assigned to the user is present in slash etc shells in case I remove the shell from uh, okay if I want to show you a thing slash etc in a dot d vs ftpd start user add ftp1 
pass w sorry pass wd ftp1 ftp1 okay and why am i setting this uh, shell to bin false so that he is not able to log in or he is not able to have access to ssh to run any command on it so i just exit okay root red hat ftp localhost yum install ftp client was not present ftp ftp1 at localhost or just type ftp localhost user is ftp1 password is ftp1 okay ftp1 am i typing the wrong password tail minus f where okay it says user unknown vsftpd says spam winbind it went to winbind okay so let's try to understand it says session key in it fine the user should not be present in vsftpd users and for authentication shell is fine and after that it went to password auth password auth where it checked out for the presence of uh, and it should have passed at pam unix so which is sufficient So here if we have a look into it, it says VSFTPD auth section. Here you can see it was auth section request W uh, BC logon failure. Okay. Anti status, no such user. But before that he should have made use of ftp1 auth config to ui okay i just disable win bind based authentication and click on next ftp localhost ftp1 ftp1 okay so it says login failed so there is some issue user not known to the underlying authentication module ftp1 shells okay so the issue is bin false this shell is not allowed to have access to ftp service slash etc pam.d and vsftpd here we can see that it needs to be satisfying pam underscore shells so etc shells and here we add bin false ok 
cannot change to directory so that is fine home ftp1 it exists okay ls minus ld is fine get sc bool minus a grab ftp so here if you have a look into ftp home dir so this is switched off so you are not allowed to connect to your home directory set sc bool ftpd sorry ftp home dir on so now if i do ftp home dir so it's switched on now let me try and here the login is successful and you have access to it so this is how it happens uh, the same if we have a look into password auth it makes uh, sure well the authentication modules are passed and after that accounting so this is actually a stackable set of modules that you define how a particular service is going to authenticate itself okay let me show you how su will work it says authentication module succeeds if pam underscore root ok is fine so if i am trying to run any command or uh, sorry if i am trying to run su as a root it is not going to ask me for the password the reason is it's making sure that in case the user is root that is sufficient it means it's not going to check anything else and will allow it access and if not then make sure or include all the lines in system auth for accounting once again pam succeed if uid equal to zero or uh, this is equal to root let's have a look into sudo so there is again the same thing sudo auth account and password all are including system auth okay let's understand pam underscore limit so there could be you can specify a list of limits of the number of files that a user can open the number of sessions he can open file descriptors and here is the file where you define these variables limit the core file size limit the maximum data size maximum file size memory logged in cpu time here you can define how you want to restrict a particular user group or all to a particular set of resources So this is the generic details. Uh, let me see if okay. One more thing which is important is Pam underscore tally module. So or Pam underscore tally module. This module can be used to set in the authentication phase so that it makes sure that your counter is not more than what is not allowed to have access to it for example if we talk about this section it says first of all pam secure tty 
spam underscore security TTY make sure that that if it's the root user that is trying to log in into the system the terminal should be present in slash etc security TTY secondly for all others it makes sure that PAM underscore tally 2 module is loaded which says deny equal to 4 after fa 4 failed login attempts lock a user account he should not be allowed to log in and unlock time the time after which that account can be uh, will be unlocked and user can try logging into it with the correct password even deny root says even deny access to the root if he has multiple failed login attempts so var log tally log is a file which it makes use of and uh, updates the counter of the users that has failed login attempts so I think uh, this is the generic details of PAM we'll continue our discussion uh, with the PAM in case you still have any issues or concern please let me know so that we can have a better understanding of the spam module thanks for viewing the video have a good day